second here. All right, here we go. So, um, hello to everybody, and uh, I've got is it uh, Brewerman? Is that the correct pronunciation? Browerman. Browerman? Okay. Uh, so, and you were the uh, sketch artist at the Johnny Depp trial. Um, I was. So, could you sort of introduce yourself a little bit to uh, to the audience here? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Isabel Browerman. Uh, you can call me Izzy. Um, I was the sketch artist. Uh, I was one of two sketch artists at the Depp v. Heard trial. Um, and I'm a fine artist in New York. And I have a interest, an interesting background, I guess, with live drawing. Um, so that's sort of what got me into this contentious space that's, you know, was such an interesting and wild thing to document. It was uh, certainly a, an interesting experience <laughs> there. Um, so did you, have you done uh, court sketch artist work before or is this, was this the first time? This was the first time. I actually just got in my car and went down there because I had done, um, I, I, I could go all the way back to my foundation in live drawing, but I was watching the trial like everybody else um, on YouTube. And I saw, first I was like very impressed with the access that everyone was being given and maybe impressed isn't the right word, but um, it piqued my curiosity. And so I was watching it and I had begun drawing uh, people that were on the stand and then I started to draw Depp and Amber because it was just such a zoo-like place. And um, just having them in that architecture and, and, and knowing how uh, rough things had gotten in the media and then sort of seeing a representation of that in a litigious space, um, live for everyone to watch. I was really drawn into that. And so, um, then I decided once Depp got on the stand, I'm going down there because I had read an article that was like, meet the women that are waiting in line at 5 AM. Like, Oh shit, I'm going to have to get there at 4 AM at this point. So I, I drove down that night and got in that line. So you were I you were in the lineup each day. Yeah, so I wasn't in the lineup each day, but that was how I began. Um, I began in the line, and then I once I had work and sort of an idea of what I wanted to do. That's when I sent out a proposal to a Culture Mag in New York, and I said, "Look, the only way I'm going to be able to do this uh, in a way that I would approve of is to get sleep." So. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to need to have an official spot. And aside from sleep, like it gets a little uh, tense when you're trying to find a good spot and there are fans in there that, you know, they don't want to move over an inch. And so you don't have a clear window. So I just sort of wanted to take an official route and, and um, judge Ascarati approved of, of that. So it was well, that, a trial case. That's uh, that's fascinating because I've always wondered like how the sketch artists get in to those. This is iced places. coffee, by the way. <laughs> that's melted. In case anyone's worried. Oh, I'm I'm not worried. This is sort of a uh, all is all is good here, but uh, yeah, no, that's I was sort of curious about that because of course the, like the lineup was crazy, and. I'm, I'm glad you were able to skip the lineup because otherwise, how could you do it? Um, yeah, but I will say that being in the line, I'm so glad that I did it because I got to meet the people that are, are really putting their life, their health, their finances on the line to support Johnny. And that was such a huge part of Courtroom 5J so being able to familiarize myself with that aspect was, I think, really beneficial. And I loved drawing the fans as well, like the courtroom culture, the deputies, everybody. So and that was the thing, like a lot of people said, why 
are you drawing if it's live streamed? And I have a lot I could say about that, but the main takeaway would be that the live stream was two cameras and it was directed. And there were other elements of the room that, you know, you could only understand by being there. Absolutely. Because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of sort of crazy aspects to it that I, I think people miss. Uh, just, did you get to meet uh, Yvonne who was there? Uh, she was sort of uh, Depp's biggest fan, I think is her description. And I think that's an accurate description. I would agree. Yeah. Um, I, I did some portraits of Yvonne and I am writing a piece. So I have a little spot in the piece about Yvonne because I found her to be uh, really an interesting character. And yes, I would, I call her his number one super fan. Yeah. I'm really glad you got to see the lineup as well, just because of uh, it is such an interesting experience, but uh I'm also glad you were able to get in there because uh, I don't know if you noticed I was, you know, I was behind you, but I was drifting off at points trying to stay focused. Yeah, I, there was. And, and, and by the end, you know, I think a lot of people that had been, you know, cycling into that courtroom day after day were just there was a, even a cough that was sort of circulating the space. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but yeah. I it at the end and i'm sure all of us had like a bronchitis or something yeah there was uh i i remember johnny depp's driver was actually one of the people who was coughing the loudest people were saying who's yeah. coughing and i'm like it's yeah the <laughs> and, a and you feel like you're 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 doing something wrong like the court is such a tense space and if you make a noise it's like you could feel that everyone is wondering who made that noise. Like even when my pencils would drop, you know, I just sort of froze for at least 15 seconds. And on again. So it was a tense, it was a tense place to, to, to draw and to try to get, you know, things accurately, especially because, you know, people wanted to see the results and, um, I wanted to make sure that uh, I was getting the real expressions and, and, and sort of creating an opinion by, by, um, by, by uh, drawing things um, in their likeness. So that was, it was confrontational in its own way. Well, yes, it's absolutely uh, sort of a weird sort of, space especially for an artist i imagine because how do you manage to get uh it's got to be challenging to capture sort of a moment when that moment isn't going to sit around and wait for you it's going to like the court isn't going to stop for you to so how how does that process happen where you sort of capture a moment that is fleeting the way it the way i went about it was basically with materials so instead of capturing one single moment um, there were a lot of different um, baseline expressions that I would build upon um, in sort of a time lapse way. But the most important thing was at least to get one raw gesture for each part of the posture and the expression. So um, I don't know, it's like a lot of luck, like, because you sort of turn off a bit and you try to act with your hand in a way that replicates what they're doing. And, and sometimes I would even like, just to get the direction of the frown, even like for Amber, or like the way that she would tilt her chin or sort of look up and over, I would myself try to do it to understand, you know, how she was angled and, and what that felt like. And, you know, I don't know if I was acting or something. <laughs> well, sometimes it seems like sketches can better capture the, the tone or the feel of something rather than like a photograph just captures the moment, right? It just yeah. snaps. But, uh, you know, and I was, 
you know, I'll admit it peeked over your shoulder a few times just to see sort of what your drawings were looking like. And sometimes it was like, this actually captures the feel better than what I saw, you know, Getty or something posting images. So I was really impressed by, uh, by that. Uh, I'm getting a lot of requests. Are there any sketches that you're able to sort of hold up and show people? Because I know you're working on a piece, so I don't know if there's anything you can show people here. Um, I can't actually, because I have um, an exclusive agreement, um, but I will be publishing in the next week. And I would just say, um, put my Instagram in there. And when, when the works are done, I guess I could show you one that I put um, on my Instagram already. That'd be fantastic. Okay, I'm just gonna run out of the picture for a moment. Sounds good. Let me make sure this isn't it. Yeah. And I'm just going to throw in the chat a link to your Instagram here. Thank you. Okay. You know what, I will show you one that I haven't shown, um, but that I will not, I will, um, anyway, we'll see what happens. But this is um, Dr. Spiegel. Oh know? yes, yep, he yeah. was quite the character. He really was, and he was a joy to draw because there was just so much happening, like at the center of his face. Sorry, I'm, like, I'm terrible at staying in the frame. Oh, no worries. He was very, uh, very emotive, I guess is a way to put it. Yeah. His, and uh... and um, yeah, it, it, watching the TikToks, because I don't have 2020, but um, watching the TikToks, I could really see his tongue moving around in his mouth and like sort of the, 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 the 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 like squinting in the forehead and wrinkle so happy to see your face oh <laughs> that's okay, uh, so the is... super chat putting up here just so that uh although i don't mean to interrupt you here but uh yeah no this is it's really interesting just to hear a bit about sort of which witnesses were of interest to you as well because i imagine yeah. some of them were a little more difficult um, oh yeah i i mean i think like the more like the tax attorney and like Ben King, even like they were harder to draw just because they were what you really needed to do was to get them s accurately because they're sort of stoic and um, simple. Um, but, you know, I think probably Ben King was um, one of the harder ones. And then also um, Isaac was hard to draw just because his features are like his hair is light. And so I just had a hard time. He has a great expression, but I don't know why I had a really hard time drawing Isaac. Um, probably because I was in, in, enjoying his personality so much. Um, but this is Dr. Spiegel. How do I? Oh, nice. So this is like a, a quote uh, as well. I'm trying to, it's kind of like giving me vertigo to try to like, Line. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult when you're trying to place the... Uh, so it's at the end of the day, it's a rather lengthy list of the substances. Oh. Substance abuse about... No, at the end of the day, it's a rather lengthy list of what substance abuse can do to your brain. Nice. That uh, He was a, a, certainly an interesting witness there. But uh, and I see some people asking, why did you need a sketch artist with a televised trial? We just answered that one. Uh, but uh, I mean, if you look at that art, you can see the like the distinction between sort of the sh use of shadow there. And, you know, I think that it gives it a life that uh, that we don't get with just pictures. Yeah. Uh, to be in that space um, was to gather a lot of information that you can't gather from watching the televised version. That was that was why I went down as well. I mean, not just to see the jurors, which I was there to see, and I'm, you know, but also just like the feeling of the space because it does have its own kind of 
breathing in a weird way. Like you can. Oh yeah. You know, There's an atmosphere, you know, that you can only understand by being there because it's not even about drawing the bodies, but it's between the bodies. It's the relationship that everyone has to each other in the room and out of the room. You know, I found the bathroom to be such an interesting place and the smoke breaks and, uh, you know, the twilight, the twilight line, you know, the, the ordering Duncan to the line and the knitters and the, the, the second line, you know, before you enter the court and the cafeteria. So, I mean, I can't say that the jurors weren't, you know, witnessing that. I mean, the, you probably saw the same way I did. Their jurors were wandering around in the same yeah. sort of space. I was actually kind of surprised by that because fish tank. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're there in the cafeteria or something and you can hear people chatting, um, I actually had, had moments where, uh, you know, the only place we could stream was from that, uh, that little courtyard. And I had moments when I had to. There leave. were jurors that are in the courtyard. Yeah, yeah. I know. Snap. And yeah, overhearing a juror's conversation, which thankfully wasn't mm -hmm. anything trial related, you know, yeah. but uh, it was just, it's kind of an unusual uh, space. And did you get a picture with the alpacas? No, I did not. <laughs> yeah. How were they? Were they friendly? They were actually really friendly. I got a picture with the alpacas. They were quite, uh, you know, they were quite sweet, but. I've never been to a trial with alpacas before. I don't think anyone, you could probably, you're one of the only few people in the world. Yeah, it's... It's like, yeah, it was a spectacle. And I'm getting some questions about what else, uh, or what else you sort of do in terms of art, because if this was sort of your first trial thing, I see on your Instagram, you've got a bunch of uh, really cool clothing designs. Is that sort of your primary passion or what do you um, sort of do I'm multimedia. So I, I have a fine art studio where I do design work. I've done wallpaper. Um, I have designed and I do design clothes. Um, they're all like one of one, very slow, intentional pieces. Um, and then I am a painter and I'm a collage artist. So um, I take a lot of, things that I make on the road. I'm just somebody who has to create wherever I am. Piles of napkins in the closet with drawings and writings and writing, I guess. And um, I collage that stuff into something um, like a large note kind of diaristic stuff. So yeah, I do have, you know, peripheral work just from being in Fairfax that I'm going to collage into a, a piece. Well, then, and then, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I'm looking at some of your stuff on Instagram. It's uh, it's amazing stuff. Thank so you. People sh uh, I, I dropped the link below. I'll sort of drop it again. Uh, you should check out her Instagram. She's got uh, a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, I'll probably, uh, as I sort of mentioned, I'll be in touch about... Uh, trying to commission something as well if you're uh, amenable because I, I, yeah, I just want to make it happen. And uh, so uh, which publication did you say that this was going to uh, going to end up? So uh, the works are going to be first, they'll be released. Um, some of the works will be released um, at Hyperallergic. That's a culture mag in New York based in Brooklyn, which is where I am. And then We'll see. I did write a longer piece um, that I'm still sort of reworking, but I've had a couple conversations about that. And then I'm speaking with others about a gallery exhibition um, for the original court works. That would be awesome. Uh, if, if that comes together, let me know and I will, you know, blast that across everything because, uh, you know, that is that's fascinating. And we'll let you know for sure. I mean, I was even in my when I got home, I took all of my drawings because I have so many of the, you know, the the everyday characters, uh, the the repeats. Uh, like I have like 
I don't know how many of Amber and Johnny and Camille and the judge just like, you know. Uh, and so I laid them out on my floor uh, in the same way that the, the room was laid out. So um, yeah, it was just really cool to see it in that um, arrangement. And um, so I'm, I'm playing with how that would look uh, in a gallery space too. And I've got some people asking if you'll have any of your art as NFTs, which uh, is not really my thing. I've got rants on NFTs, but if there's interest, then hey, that might be worth doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not closed off to anything. I would just want to make sure that everything was done responsibly. So, but I have yeah. some things. I actually have a funny story. Um, and I think I, I was thinking to myself, this could be an interesting second leg to the project. Um, I had no idea that I wasn't allowed to draw the jury. So, and, and the deputy, you know, he didn't blame me because we hadn't had the conversation. I had gotten there a week late. So I was like sitting there, you know, sketching this like six hour study. <laughs> um, and I actually happened to leave it in the courtroom when the lawyers were meeting for, I forget what it was, but they had to meet with the judge after hours. So the photographer came and said, Izzy, you left your stuff up there. And then they wouldn't let me back in. So I, I was like, I'll just leave it there until the next day. I come back up the next day and deputy Nick, I forget his last name right now. He's like, I have to talk to you. Like, oh, God. <laughs> it's like the judge saw your drawing and I told, I let her know that, you know, you had no idea because I realized now that we hadn't had the conversation, but the judge has it in her safe for a year and you'll get it back if the jurors decide to unmask their identity. So I have a very valuable drawing that was very, um, uh, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, illegal. <laughs> and it's in the safe of Judge Penny. For a, for a year and then you get that back depending on the uh actions that uh, the, if the jury unanimously unmasks wow yeah. so here's hoping you get your contraband drawing back thank you that That's would the be part of the jurors that that would be fantastic and so hit me up in a year i'll let you know we'll see absolutely. how absolutely Cause that is, that's, that's huge. Cause I felt so bad because I really had no idea. And then I started to consider how interesting that could be if the jurors all consent to my publishing it, because there's just nothing um, visually that represents uh, what went down on that stage. Right. Right. Stage. Right. Yeah. Yep. It it's would be It'd be fascinating. And I wonder, I mean, I guess if the jurors reveal themselves, uh, it might be nice if you could give, like, get them a print of their, here's your drawing of your juror, the jurors. But, uh, of course, that's your call entirely. But uh, I hope, you know, that's that's a real historical artifact there in that safe. That's yeah. really cool. And, I, trust, uh, I trust the judge, too. I mean, she was so level-headed. So when she knew that I had had no idea it was like there was no discussion past that and i really got to understand on a personal level how reasonable um she was i see somebody saying that they're uh, having to pick between me and emily i i didn't realize i was competing with emily here but uh yep so <laughs> that's emily d baker who has been doing a lot of commentary as well and i love her work um the bailiffs were I'm glad the bailiff was standing up for you because the bailiffs were really no nonsense. Um, oh, yeah, he was wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I really, I loved the bailiff and all of the deputies. Like, they were just such a kind group. Uh, you know, professional, but kind. Yeah, although they were really kind of, uh, they had to run that place like drill sergeants a lot of the time because, uh, I mean... <laughs> The as gallery they, was a little wild sometimes. Yeah, as they should. I mean, this isn't, you know, it's supposed to be a neutral environment and it already, you know, wasn't. 
because the gallery was full of fans. So I think uh, it's important to still respect the justice process. And so I think they did a good job of negotiating the two things. Absolutely. I mean, and I know they had rules about, you know, you shouldn't show any expression and you shouldn't. Uh, but of course, the gallery, uh, there's only so much you could do on that, especially when you've got people who are not used to the uh, solemnity of the court process. Yep. And, you know, the, it was a shocking uh, trial. So, you know, I like when the finger went up, I'm sketching the finger. I got the finger. Um, oh, wonderful. Yeah. I have the finger and uh but like that was pretty graphic and gruesome and uh i think there was like some material must have been bone or i don't know that thing was d deeply wounded uh but you can't help but have a physical reaction when you see a limb chopped chipped whatever you want to call it yeah no, for I mean, people are going to have that sort of reaction. Were you there for the the one woman who got thrown out? Yes. When did, she stood up and said, "Did she say uh, what would you do if this was your baby?" I've heard uh, what would you do if this is your baby, or uh, you know, or uh, you know that sort of thing. I but, think that's uh, what it was. I think it was something along the lines of like, "I love you." And then what would you do if this was, if it was yours? Oh, lovely. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's just such a weird, uh, you know, such a what weird moment there. After the jurors left and the judge. Oh, that was, oh, that was out of the presence of the jurors. Yeah. So that's, that's fantastic. Cause uh, yeah, that's concerning. It was at the end when he was, uh, I think we were being dismissed for lunch or something and a break and, and he was still there um, sort of waving at everybody. And, you know, that turn that everybody just waits for um, in the gallery. And, and she, she stood up and was like, I love you, Judy. And, and then she had a child with her and uh, yeah. So something <laughs> along those lines, I, I can't say verbatim, but yeah, there was so a problem. Information. Not quite the uh, what is it? Uh, yes, Yvonne gets the super fan designation. That yeah. and, and, and how about the fans that are traveling from um, other countries? I mean, that's pretty wild too. And and there were different, you know, there were different kinds of fans too. So some were, um, you know, just deeply loved Johnny. Some called themselves. Uh, people who are after the truth. Some were a little, I'm pretty sure everyone was a little bit of both as far as the fans went. Um, but Waldman even said, you know, I would call the real Laura B an internet journalist. Yeah. So Laura was in there and I, I spoke to Laura a little bit and I actually drew Laura um, with a young woman from Portugal who they were holding hands um, when when um, they were waiting to see if, if I, I don't know what the proper legal terms were, but it was something about dismissing uh, Johnny's claim. Right. The uh, the motion to to throw it out, basically. Yeah. I forget, I forget what Virginia calls it, but yeah, they were trying to toss the claim. And I was wondering if you'd actually run into the woman from Portugal who was there, because uh, mm -hmm. when you said other countries, I mean, I came from Canada. Oh, but... I didn't know that. Uh, I was not the uh, the longest distance traveler there by a long. But that's still a distance to Virginia. Yep. Yeah. I was actually, I came there for a, uh, there was a shooting competition that I was participating in. And then after that, I was like, I am so close. It, I should just extend my stay a little bit. So that's sort of how I got to be there. Um uh, and I'm seeing somebody in the chat saying, uh, Johnny, or she was saying, Johnny, when are you going to claim your baby? Uh, yeah. Was that what it was? I've that's I've heard that neighborhood. Yeah, I've heard different things, and I suspect she probably wasn't there long. <laughs> I no, wasn't there that, that no, day. no, no. She was out. Yeah, that was it. And I mean, I guess if it's your only day and you got something to say, I mean, that's what that's what you know probably went through that person's head a little bit. Like, 
I this is the only chance I have or something. Who knows? And it was interesting when you talk about the fans seeing some people. Uh, I saw somebody with like a, a suitcase full of makeup going through and putting like really putting a lot of effort into it. Yeah. And I was just thinking, wow, that's, uh, you know. All kinds of um, dolling up in the bathroom during breaks. And, um, you know, I think one of the other really, uh, I don't know, I think it was a little distressing, um, if I'm being candid, was when the door clicked and it, it was like Pavlov. Like, as soon as you heard the door click, you knew he was coming or she was coming. And it was just like, there was just this dramatic shift in the gallery. You know, everybody's body changes and, you know, people are adjusting and this and that. But all I could think of was Pavlov and, and the click of the door. All fascinating, really. And I really just enjoyed taking it all in. It's... Uh... There's still so much to take in. I mean, the verdict is a conclusive part of what will be a much longer conversation about how the dust settles from this trial. Absolutely, because of course there's going to be larger discussions about, uh, I'm actually hearing a little bit more from people, um, you know, male victims who are saying, you know, that this is a, a big moment for them. But on the other hand, I'm hearing from uh, from other people who maybe haven't watched the trial as closely, who are coming in and saying, you know, that they're really concerned about this verdict. So it's uh, yeah. Well, um, I think that the male victims, um, and I work in the space, and I work with male victims. Um, uh, they're my, you know, I do activism work um, in Michigan, um, and I think that you know, it is important that everybody has a space to be heard and to be believed and um, to, to, to get justice and tell their story and maybe we can improve the world that way. Um, but I think that there's like been a conflation that's happened with males having absolutely, I believe, the right and the this opening, this wonderful opening to feel like they can maybe address something that was oppressed. Um, that and then like the sort of attack that's happened um, for, uh, against women. You know, like I've personally heard comments that were like, this is, you know, what women get away with or something. And then I just think like, I think we can have reasonable critical conversations about justice and about um, domestic violence without putting each other down um, unnecessarily. And uh, yeah, one thing that I see a lot of is people often want a trial to have larger meaning. You know, they want it to be a societal momentous thing. But of course, the jury's got to decide based on the facts that they're looking at in court. And um, I mean, it's actually it's actually improper to suggest to them that they should be making a decision be based on societal impact. We actually saw that in this trial where uh, Ben Chu was arguing that uh, there should have been a, a corrective remark over the closing because uh, Rottenborn's closing was basically saying, look at the message this sends. Uh, and so yeah. that, and these are all, yeah, sure. I hadn't really thought about that. I mean, I, I think a lot of people were like it being a juror would have been it, to be a fair juror in this trial came with a lot of pressure. And I mean, you were there seeing the jury. Uh, it looked to me like they were taking things really seriously and really, oh, yeah. or, I mean, there's one guy who I think was napping at times, but there were, that, there were definitely um, like different personalities um, which I studied and uh, legally recorded via drawing that's in a safe now with the judge. But um, I think that some of, of the jurors were more engaged than others, yes. There, there was a nodding off period in that one afternoon. I think 
actually more than one juror was nodding off and the judge sort of sent over the bailiff <laughs> to Give rock, people rouse them. Yeah. That was that afternoon that was like all video depots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. And, 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 and um, some fans were nodding off too. And oh, uh, Yvonne got uh, asked to go for a walk a few times because she was, and I mean, God bless her. Oh, but she, you know, she put like, when did she sleep? You know, that's the question I have. I don't think she really was. She was just like there in the lineup all the time. And like, it was brutal on a lot of the, the really dedicated people. That's what someone said to me, you know, because I, I'm writing this piece. And at one point I, I refer to the fans. I make a, a comparison to like, there's something warrior about it um, because it was just like that dedication was like a training exercise. It, yeah, it, it's, I mean, I don't want to compare anything to sort of, but lack of sleep is a really difficult thing to deal with. And it uh, it's it was tough. And the other thing that was really interesting is the difference between the Depp fans and the Herd fans that were in that lineup. Because there were some Amber Heard fans in that lineup. Mm -hmm. But they're being much more, much quieter about it. As and, I would be too. I mean, they were in the major, minority. Sorry, the majority. Yeah. The majority. Yeah. Well, and I mean, there were a lot of people with very strong emotions uh, throughout oh, yeah. the trial. And I got, so asked, I, I, I got asked, like, um, are you a Depp or are you a Heard fan? I said, I'm here to draw. Well, we just want to make sure, you know, I just I just hope that at least you're neutral, because if you were a Heard fan, you know. So I understand why there would be some hesitation to be a vocal Heard fan. Absolutely. And I mean, and you mentioned that I saw some people in chat asking, you know, your thoughts on the, the ultimate outcome. Uh, she's not going to give a thoughts on the ultimate outcome because she is sort of there in, I mean, you're not a court member, but you're there as sort of an impartial observer, right? And it's important to keep that. Uh, so just for the people in the chat who've been asking that question, you know, it's not going to happen. That's, but it is important that you sort of capture the moment there. And uh, I sort of get the impression that you're trying to be fair to the sort of emotions by both sides, you know, in because the I wanted to capture the whole thing. Yeah. And it's really a, uh, it is an important cultural moment, even if sort of this isn't like a precedent setting or anything like that, but there's a lot of interest in it. And so I'm really glad that, you know, you're, that that's sort of something that you're focusing on is trying to make sure that everybody is uh, is getting a proper uh, representation there. Yeah, visual journalism. Yeah. It, it, the, it was hard with the verdict because there was so much that I wanted to get and it was such, it was gonna be so quick. And it really was that one moment, you know, unlike the closing was a little bit difficult as well, just because those were outside of the day-to-day -day, um, circumstances in the court. But uh, yeah, so the verdict was, those drawings are, I think they're really cool because they're just, they're line drawings. Like I didn't get to fill them out in the same way. So uh, they're more uh, urgent than the, time lapse in the portraiture so a very different uh tone to them a very different uh yeah uh, and the uh, weight the weight isn't as even you know somebody won and somebody lost so there's celebration on one side and then there's a a, a fuzzy quiet on the other so i i tried to pay attention to everything i wish i could uh have had two pens and two brains and sort of just but alas i'm not an octopus that i was gonna say it's got to be difficult at times to capture or to decide what to capture because for instance when you know depp is on the stand you've also got amber and her reactions to that you know and 
Yeah. That's, so is there some, you know, how did you resolve sort of that? Um, I did a little bit of moving, um, but I, I, I looked, I looked at her a lot and, um, I tried to, her posture was, I could get a lot more of her because she was turned. And so I, I would always see her silhouette. So it was, you know, depth. I studied his shoulders a lot, um, mm -hmm. and his turns, you know, I knew what those turns kind of in the end, like when he turned to his lawyer or when he turned to the podium because something might have been absurd to him or just disgraceful. I don't know. But uh, those turns were really important. And then the way that she just sort of postured herself in the chair and then a lot of like the hand to the chin. So, yeah, it was just a lot of like building a... Um, lexicon and then and then trying to place everything as best as i could and i mean it is always sort of difficult when you're you're trying to capture a lot of this from behind that's uh that's a challenge but i liked what you said about the shoulders because you could see a lot of tension yeah will sort of crunch up or they relax or you know depending on how that that is so i wanted to see his drawings you know I wanted to see what he was drawing because it was sort of like I felt um, as the other person drawing in the room, I felt like there was uh, like a line between us, like as far as I wonder what he's working on kind of. I think that would actually be really fascinating <laughs> to see as well. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just wondering if there's a way to make it happen. I don't know how I'd make it happen, but like a, an exhibit of his drawings and your drawings. That but, would be really interesting. Cause it's sort of the art, the art of that, that moment. Yeah. And, uh, and two completely different. I mean, like I am in a completely different, much more removed, much more observational space. Like I can't even imagine what kind of space, you know, his, where his head was and, and and so the instincts behind the drawings are 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 different, but yeah, I'd be really interested. And I see some of your uh, you know some of the things out there. Just uh, you know, there's the one sort of image you've got on the, your Instagram there, mm -hmm. and uh, with sort of several images of depth versus you know several images of herd. It's uh, it's interesting trying to capture those emotions just because it was a very tense. Uh... Oh yeah. And certain, certain, you know, sentences just hit, you know, there were moments where I was just like, as a person, like, wow. You know? And so I wanted to make sure to absorb that the, like the linguistics and to then, divulge that into uh, the gesture. So it's it's a funny dance, but yeah. Overall, it was a really emotional experience. I think that, you know, I tried my best to remain open to everything and, you know, uh, compartmentalize this as a functional thing that I was doing. But when I would drive away and drive back to New York for the weekend, it was like, I listen to my music. I open my window. I smoke my cigarette. Like I put my arm out the window, felt the breeze a little bit, you know, we're in that tight space and there's just so much being passed around. And, you know, so to un unravel after that, just felt really good. And that's totally part of it. And did you, uh, did you go to the sort of uh, that line that was every day when Depp was leaving? No, I didn't go every day. I I, I didn't um, do that every day. I, I sort of spent time just walking around. I even interviewed some people and then I did witness it a couple of times. And then uh, during the verdict, I went out there to see what was happening and um, also on the front lawn. And there was just that nine to five. I, I don't know how people survive it, too, because... <laughs> Every day leaving the courtroom, like I was a zombie, I felt like, but I guess I was doing a lot of, a lot of work. You know? 
Oh, I I can say I I definitely felt like a zombie at several times, uh, just because I was sleeping in that court uh, in the lineup out there, and then you know you go in and I'm trying to take notes. It's uh, it's difficult, yeah. but just uh, I was wondering if you got any drawings of like those the out front and the the out back thing because yeah, because uh, those will be fantastic to see if uh, you know. Uh, you know when the when that gets published, I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing that because and, uh, and, and not everything will be published, but um, because I want to save things for the exhibition. But I do have some really cool ones of the fans and of the waiting lo the lines and the I do have the receptions and then the final verdict when they're leaving. The fans were sort of lined up, and then there was that space, and then the news people, which I thought really kind of marked uh, the tone and, and, and the priority of that courthouse, which was the fans had, uh, they were prioritized, I think, over the media um, to a certain extent, you know, because the media didn't have as much access as the fans because the fans were vying for that line and there were no press passes. So you know, that was a, I got to know a lot of, uh, of, of uh, loyal debt fans in that space. And that's what this trial was kind of about, I think, largely, as far as courthouse culture and was, the deputies. I was going to say it, uh, that was really interesting that the media was so limited uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what was uh, being able to, who was able to be there. And yeah. um, were you, um, uh, so I, how was the process of you getting that permission? Like when you went in, were you having to, like, did you appear on your own to ask the judge for permission or was that, a, oh. or was that, a, they sent legal counsel to, to make that application? No. So I just, I showed up and I was like, I'm a portrait artist. And the deputies were like, well, why did you wait in line? Why did you get the, you know, ban? And then they did like the, the call to see, you know, if I was on the list or something. And I'm like, I'm a portrait artist, but I'm not on the list. So, uh, so that's when I sort of managed to get the number of the coordinator and that's how I facilitated it. Um, it was through a coordinator with Fairfax and f they, they then ran the letter uh, to the judge and the judge had uh, approval rights and um, the letter was sufficient. And, you know, it should have been because it was a legitimate assignment and you just have oh. to do things the right way in a courthouse. That's what I learned. Absolutely. And I'm super glad you made it in because, uh, you know, I've said before, there's a very different energy from the, from like the courthouse sketches than from the pictures. I see people still asking in the chat, like why have sketch artists if we've got, and I, I like the feel of the sketch artists. I've actually never run a trial that's been important enough for a sketch artist to be there, but I really like the feel of, you know, of what that captures and the emotionality yeah. of it. Yeah. You're capturing the silence that you can't understand. Uh, when you're looking at a photograph or when you're watching the live, for instance, you're capturing um, a finite moment that um, has a lot to do with um, everybody relating to each other in a space and the context of those different moving characters. And so I think even for people that were watching the live, I, I insisted that, you know, that is the TV adaptation of the play, which was in that room. And, um, you know, it included the gallery, it included the jurors, it included the deputies, it included the breaks, it included, uh, you know, the lawyers and the lawyer's relationship to, to the gallery and to the jurors. So there was just so much more. And, and even with photographs, you still can't understand that. 
So. No, oh, absolutely. And I mean, uh, did did any of the lawyers like see your images? Have they have any of them seen? And were they did they have reactions to that? Um, yeah. So the day of the verdict, um, I had gotten emails from uh, Brown and Rudnick about uh, seeing the works and they had been, both teams had been looking at my stuff and they were like, Oh, perceptive or this or that. And then Brown and Rudnick asked for me to send them the work. And I said, I'll bring it in, but I'm not um, putting it anywhere. So I brought it in and I went into that back room with them and I put everything out and showed them, uh, the drawings and, and they were, Ben especially was really enthusiastic about it. And um, yeah, we discussed, you know, that they would like some of the work and I can understand why. Yeah. Well, I, I think that'd be amazing. And I get, I get the sense that Ben is like a super old kind of guy. He is so swell. I, uh, I really <laughs> liked, uh, there's an image of him with a, uh, He's got an alpaca doll that somebody gave him stuffed into uh, uh, stuffed into his pocket. And I thought that was really kind of uh, sweet there. Uh, people, if you want to see her work, uh, she's got an Instagram. It's uh, it's a pinned comment. and But a lot of the stuff is uh, basically embargoed because it's going to be in an exclusive uh, piece. So and you'll have, have some to wait. Some of I'm embargoing oh. myself for the exhibit. <laughs> Yes, and she's going to have a an art gallery exhibit, which is probably going to be way too far away from me to see, which makes me sad. But uh, if you're, that'll be in New York. Probably in New York, yeah. So if you should, uh, you know, you guys should check that out. Um, if you're, you know, at all in the area, I'll try to send. Uh, I think Joe is from uh, from New York, so I'll try to send him there. And I see uh, somebody's asking. Did you happen to sketch the moment the sunbeam came down upon the uh, came down upon the goddess of oh, thunder and justice? That's Camille Vasquez. Uh, um, I got some really amazing ones of Camille, and yes, the sun uh, on her face, uh, carving out her silhouette. But you know, I thought the wildest one was when the the thunder. Were you there for the thunder? I was. That was. That's like one of those moments that if you Was put it into a cross examination if, of Amber, I thought. Yeah, if you put that into a movie, people would be rolling their eyes. They'd yeah. be saying, like, this is too, too. No, me, it's giving me chills now. That was like such a why. And, and it was loud. And and then, um, yeah, my I got a text later that was like there was a tornado warning or something. Yeah, well, there was that uh, tornado warning, and somebody's asking if they can post a music set list. Um, send that to me on Twitter, and I'll try to retweet it. Um, but yeah, it was that was such a wild moment that you know she's asked this question, and Amber starts to answer, and there's this thunder clap that sort of stops her a bit, and then you know she restarts, and I'm going, wow, <laughs> it was. It was wild. And then, of course, that beam of light right afterwards. It was just... It was the stuff of legends. And it was totally inspiring to be able to document it. It's. Uh, I do some leather work. And I'm actually, uh, at some point, contemplating if I find myself with spare time sort of trying to create a journal. I like a little... Because, uh, you know, if you're a lawyer, you, you're always going through with like a legal pad. So mm -hmm. just like a little sort of thing. And try to capture that moment on that and send it their way. Because I do leather work basically entirely as gifts. Because uh, I'm super cool about my own artistic work. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it was so wild. Um, yeah, I, I was, I wrote, yeah, in one of the, like, I think you probably saw the, my like strip time lapse pieces. They're yep. like horizontal strips and there's just like thunder shakes the gallery or something like that. And just like that was that was like almost too on the nose, whoever did that. <laughs> it's like, um, okay. Um we get it. Yeah, you could send your signs a little more subtly. <laughs> like stop clapping yourself on the back. 
it's uh no i'm i'm really looking forward to when some of this stuff is sort of uh available i'm hoping that you'll be in a position to sell some prints of some of this as well because uh that i think is really really cool uh yeah so, so it's yeah, long and and I'm excited to be able to um, have you know the work in a space where people can access it and free the work a little bit more. Um, but I'm just trying to do everything uh, responsibly and to you know preserve the integrity of of the document, basically. Well, and I think it's really important that people sort of have respect for the system and for the, you know, the moment there. And I mean, that was another thing that I thought was really great watching you, watching you work was kind of uh, how unobtrusive you were. Like, you know, you're, you're sitting there as a documenter and uh, I was watching your face for a bit, trying to pick out on facial expressions. And I was just like, she is just a rock. I, I'm not getting anything here other than she's, keen on the drawing oh yeah i i wanted to remain as professional uh and just i i really just wanted to do the thing that i was there to do you know so uh that was like an awesome experience and sort of like i do feel like there was an element of acting in their performance well, and you said that there were some people sort of confronting you in terms of, uh, you know, which side you're on. Hopefully nobody was too tense about that. So did you have no, any the one person um, I never saw again, I don't know if they were removed or something, but there was nothing that was too bad at all. And the one thing that was like, ugh, was at one point I was drawing um, the deputy and someone was standing, you know, over me. Uh, like just watching me the whole time and like that just that I mean obviously there were people watching me draw in in the space but it wasn't as uh intimate you know I'm like pulling up my dress a little bit because I, I all I really wanted to do was uh focus on getting uh Judy and then Judy just said you know let's just draw let's just this was while we were waiting for the verdict. She said, let's just draw it in the courtroom. So they let me go in there and actually sit uh, up there and, and, and draw Judy. And that's when the verdict came in. So Judy and I were the first to know that the verdict was in. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, because the bailiff came back from the room and said, verdict, verdict. And Judy and I were in there and we were the first ones to hear it actually. Wow. So, so that drawing of Judy is the last drawing before the whole world knew that the verdict came out. Not to sens sensationalize, but um, but that's true. So no, but I mean it. It really does illustrate that you uh, kind of had a very special view into a very unique moment in time. Yeah, and and I, I and she, you know, it was cool because us being in the room, you know, she's taking down all the the words and I'm taking down the pictures. And so there was like, I, I processed it in my own special way. Um, and I, I really enjoyed meeting and getting to know Judy because she's an athlete, you know, in her field, basically what she's doing is athletic. Um, oh, that's its own thing. Like trying to do the yeah. court reporting is brutal. Why? Why? Uh, I see somebody asking about your sketchbook. If the sketchbook with the uh, deckled, and I might be missing a, you know, yeah. if your sketchbook was homemade. Yeah, um, I got it. Would you hear that? Oh, that's just construction outside. Um, <laughs> it yes, is what it is. It's homemade by the Royal Academy of Art in London. I was there uh, a few weeks, maybe a month before the trial. And so I brought home the sketchbook and they do a really good job. You can get it at the gift shop on their site. Um, it's just called, I think like paper book and it's beautiful. It's totally worth it. And yeah, the Royal Academy of Art in London. That's that's really cool. I actually thought uh, an interesting thing would be artists in their sketchbooks. Cause I've often noticed when you've got artists, um, some of them have like sketchbooks that are just like ratty beat up things that they've been throwing in a backpack. 
and other people have like lovingly crafted, you know. I have both. I got napkins, <laughs> I have toilet paper if I don't have anything else, like literally the spectrum. But when I can indulge in, in a nice sketchbook, nothing is better. Well, that is, uh, that's sort of always a cool thing too, is uh, just that how craftsmen and artists relate to their tools is always uh, something I find fascinating. So I, I, I love that question. So. Yeah, I always say like, if I were to be on a desert island, you know, they say like, what books? And I, I would love, I don't know what my book book would be. It'd probably be um, Thomas Wolf, not Tom Wolf, Thomas Wolf. Um, but uh, I would also just bring a blank sketchbook and a dictionary because dictionaries are so cool. But a blank sketchbook would be an empty book. But yes, something to fill, my friend. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the wonderful thing about, you know, uh, I've got all this leather in my back room and I'm just sort of sitting there going, eventually this will be stuff. And I don't know what it's going to look like yet, but it's it's kind of that uh, that empty space is kind of a fun uh, potential. And yeah, it's exciting. So that's... Uh, it is. And we were talking earlier about uh, sort of capturing spaces and you know the the unusual space and the unusual tone of that uh, that courtroom. Yeah. Uh, did you did you ever sort of turn around and sort of look at the the gallery themselves and? Oh yeah, all the time, all the time. It might have looked like a stretch, but I wasn't stretching. I was looking, and Does I got his security and um, you know uh, his friend. I think. He was like a counselor or something. I don't know exactly um, who sat with the security and the driver. Um, and then I loved, I, I, you know, I wish I could have, I had fantasized about just sitting next to the judge and drawing that way too. I would have loved that. Um, and I did do some live stream drawings, you know, in my spare time. So there's, there's a little of each, but as far as getting the fans during, oh my God, I tried my best. There's so many interesting characters and, you know, even like, like I loved this one woman, fascinating, had like golf ball cheeks and like a plumped up smile and these like very warm eyes, but she couldn't, but her face was like, it had, Botox or something. So she wasn't really expressing, but she was just smiling so intensely with her eyes. And so I, I just, I, I tried to as much as I could be brave enough to turn around and draw but during the breaks. If people hung around, I got them or I would ask them, can I draw you during lunch or something like that? I think I may have actually uh, spotted that woman in the, she was there on multiple days. Yes. I only Wonder noticed her on one day. Okay, then it might be somebody different because the one I was thinking of is uh, was somebody who was there a lot. She was there on multiple days, but yeah, there were so many interesting characters and interesting. Uh, it was. It's almost like sort of people showing up as extras to a movie, uh, oh, yeah. but from like extras to like thirty different movies. <laughs> yeah, and you know, like <sighs> it was just a lot too. So. That yeah, the emotional, I mean, I imagine it's got to have been a heavy emotional strain, just uh, yeah. sort of taking all that in and trying to capture it on paper. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Especially because, like, I have my own relationship to the subject at hand, so it's just um, a matter of, like, con really trying to be professional and as a, like, coping mechanism too. Were there any days that you sort of came like that you left and that were just hard days? Like that were just, you know, difficult to go through? Um, I didn't ever leave. Um, but there were moments when I might have shed a couple tears or felt a little bit uh, traumatized. Um, the cavity search was really hard for me just to 
just to even like I had never heard, you know, like it hadn't ever happened to me in that specific way. But just the idea, like just the word, I was just like, oh, my God, you know, that just sort of froze me up um, when 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 she said cavity search. So I just that sort of thing. And then um, Camille's closing, I thought, was really strong and emotional. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the graphic depictions of sexual violence were just a little harder for me. But again, I was just trying to give myself the grace to feel what I had to feel for a second and then just get back to work because there's no, there's nothing, you know, I'm not a jury member, so I don't have any responsibility to, um, pick that apart. I can just do what I'm there to do. And that was really helpful. And I found, I found it was kind of weird because a lot of the moments that kind of got to me were moments that I didn't really expect. Like I do criminal law. So I've kind of dealt with a lot of the really horrific, you know, descriptions. Um, and so a lot of that I was kind of braced for, like I knew it was coming and I was able to sort of go, okay, that's not going to be such a, a thing. But I had, I had moments like, uh, uh, the one ex friend of Johnny Depp's who was testifying about, uh, Watkins. He, yeah, I think so. Who was, and he was talking about how lonely it's got to be to be Johnny Depp. Yeah. And, Juror 8 was really moved by that, but I also was sitting there going like, yeah, that's got to be, you know, it's got to be tough. Um, Certain parts of the audio recordings were also really hard for for me to listen to. The audio Uh, was harsh. And, I mean, we've all, everybody who's coming in there sort of brings their own background. I heard from a lot of people in that lineup who were, uh survivors of various things yeah me too yeah and yeah so at times i was just like how are people sitting here you know listening to this so i'm i'm really glad you were able to uh you know uh, i'm glad you know you mentioned that you do some advocacy work and i'm you know i'm glad you've got that background too to bring that to sort of uh just from what I could see, and again, you know, peeking over your shoulder, and I'm not sure. I was trying to do it unobtrusively because I didn't want to be the guy sort of standing I over. Didn't, I didn't even know. Well, that that's good because uh, you know, it's hard Thank to you. do work when you've got people like looking over your shoulder at something, especially artistic work. But uh, I really liked sort of the emotionality that you were able to bring to a lot of that, and like the uh, sort of the tension that was getting prop I think properly revealed. So that was that was sort of one of the moments when I was like I I really want to uh I really want to reach out to uh you know to, to this person and uh sort of get some additional context cuz uh that I think is uh is fascinating and just finding out sort of what brings you there. You mentioned um you mentioned you had some life drawing experience. So what sort of uh can you talk a bit about sort of that and how you sort of, because uh, I also see some artists in the chat going, I would like to do court drawing. How do I do that? So sort of what, what prepared you for that kind of moment? Um, so I studied a little bit in Paris and I was in a really small program. There were like nine of us and we would cram into this woman's apartment that was like over the, you know, the old Notre Dame was right across the river and um, she had this balcony and and she was an artist herself and kind of a sensual lady. And so it was sort of like a free space and she brought in all kinds of models. And that was uh, one of the most uh, formative things for my um, live drawing um, portfolio but she would bring in like, like live, live models, like circus people. uh, Like there was a clown that came from a circus colony that was just outside of Paris. And then there would be um, a Broadway performer who had just been in the Lion King that would sort of be like 
in your face, like crawl, crawling and, and growling and yawning. And, and then there was this old guy, Jacques, who uh, was, must have been super suave in his day and, and, and remained, you know, he still had that style to him, but he came with a bag and we were like, what the hell are we going to get here? <laughs> and he just got naked on the couch and in his bag, he had Elvis sunglasses, a fake bouquet of roses and a cowboy hat. And we drew, drew him. He even let me take his picture, which I asked to take. I mean, anyway, it was just such a crazy space. And so I think that really prepared me for the confrontational element and the pressure of something like that. And then, you know, other things I've done, like, I got asked to record, document a um, sex worker advocate party. So there was all kinds of uh, wild sexual vignettes happening all around. And uh, just me, you know, I was the only one there that wasn't participating and I was recording it. So I've I've been in some wild, uh, it's, it's taken me on some adventures and that's why I love it. Um, because I get to see places that I've never seen before and that's all I really want to do. So. Oh, that is fascinating. Cause I imagine that's gotta be a real, uh, a real challenge, but a good preparation for being able to keep going during sort of difficult moments. I mean, uh, I had my easel up one time and this guy's in like a, those like medieval, like you have your, chin you know prison devices i don't know like you have your chin in that like wood thing and he just like turned and looked at me and he was getting you know dominated basically and i just sort of looked up like isabel what is going on but just draw that that's really cool and also was that so the sex work stuff was that part of uh, advocacy work not for me i just I, I knew somebody that worked in the space and they said, you know, there are no cameras allowed in the space. So um, would you be willing to come in and, and, and draw what was happening? And so sure. That that's awesome. Cause uh, I, I know some people who are involved in that sort of advocacy space and that's, that's really cool. Uh, those are fascinating stories and just, uh, you know, it's, I mean, I can't imagine that there's that much court reporting or court sketch, you know, stuff going on. Because as much as we have, you know, so many different uh, court, yeah. you know, appearances, most of them, you know, so-and-so and stole something from the Piggly Wiggly isn't really going to get, uh, you know, there's not really going to be a sketch artist. But uh, it's what you make of it. I mean, if, if you insist on, you know, doing that, then... Like you should just go out there and and whatever piques your curiosity, you should record and 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 try to, you know, figure out because you circle something, and, but once you start to draw it, you know, and spend time with it, there's so much to learn and and every every situation is valuable. You know, it's just a matter of, like as an artist, you know, writing about something or drawing about something, you know, circle it long enough and, and there's something there that, you know, can relate um, to, to others. So. Absolutely. And I see people saying that uh, you should start your own channel here. Uh, Me. You. Well, I think, I mean, there's lots of art channels out there and I think that might be fascinating if that was something that, uh, that interests you is just to go and, you know, and if if that's something you've ever contemplated, now is now is kind of the time to uh, to lean on that because uh, there's still a lot of you know interest out there. But uh, yeah, it's well, you'll have to talk to me about that when we're off the live, so I can know what you mean because I'm like a Rolling Stone a little bit. So, but it's always nice to like my Instagram is the place where I pretty much relay everything i can but i love to hit the road and you know travel and so uh but a live stream oh god it's it is a little bit of a different kind of experience but i would love to share my thoughts you know and 
Yeah, well, and you know, nothing has to be uh, live either. Is you can also, you know, you could also do a video recording of you, you know, doing some of your painting, and then you can edit and speed up and so forth. Oh yeah, my sister in law has been telling me to do that. She's like, just get one of those things that you know. Well, well yeah. if that's something that interests you, we'll uh, we'll talk, and I can sort of uh, give you what little advice I can, you know, provide. But uh, awesome, thank you. Oh, it's uh, it's fascinating. So, uh, I think probably this is probably a good place to sort of wrap things up here. Um, and so I'll just re-mention: uh, if you look at the pinned, it should be a pinned message in the chat. Uh, you can see her Instagram, and that's where she's got uh, some of her work, and including some of the stuff from the courtroom is up there. And you know, if you're following her on the Instagram, you will also, I'm sure. Uh, once you see the the full, uh, uh, once you once you know all this stuff is sort of out and in the public view, uh, that'll be the place to go and you know see the links and so forth. So make sure you check her out. Uh, she's done amazing work, and you know if you were sitting there in the uh, in the courtroom day after day, that is just that's a tremendous commitment, and I really think a uh, a really good sir like it's been a service to everybody out there who was following this trial and really uh invested in it so i want to say thank you for doing that and thank you for coming on the the channel and sort of talking about your experiences and i've always wondered about court reporter or like court sketch artists i've never sort of uh so for me it's been awesome to get that kind of view into things so i really appreciate that me too <laughs> thank All you right. For having me it's been a pleasure and i hope everybody is well and has peace and have a wonderful day thank you